morning. Morning, Jill. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. Who is How this? This is Linda. Oh, hi, Linda. Sorry, I've got my husband's iPad, so it's... <laughs> well, that's what it says. It says Ron's <laughs> iPad, so I was like, I don't know who Ron is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hi, Fern. I'm unmuting you so you can talk to. Hello. Hi, how are you today? I'm good. Just good. waiting to get at it. Yeah, just waiting to get at it. Hello, you're coming to join. Hmm? Are you coming to do yoga? My, um, my little sister from England came on to my morning class. It was so fun. She it was so neat about doing yoga virtually is that people from any part of the world can come. Okay. Hey, you need to go right now. Come on. <clears throat> Out you go. Hi, Miss Pat. You're good. I'm unmuting you. I've learned the master controls now, so I know how to mute and unmute everyone. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> how are you today? Good. Thank you. <laughs> good. Yeah. Looking forward to the session. Yeah, we need it, don't we? Yeah, we sure do. <laughs> yeah, for me, it just feels like it's an hour where, um, well, it's the same as when I was teaching in the, in the senior center. It just feels like it's an hour where you're just in you. You're not yeah. about all of the busy, all the stuff in the outside world. You just get to move in. And it feels like right now, that's what we're all supposed to learn how to do. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Hi, Noreen. <laughs> yeah. Noreen, are you still working lots? Oh, muted. <laughs> I am unmuting everyone until the class starts. So if you want to chat, feel free. And uh, I'll mute everyone. I've learned some master controls that I can put mute on at the end. You guys have gathered any uh, extra little things you want for Shavasana or uh, any of that? Nice. <coughs> I had to go get another chair from downstairs because uh, my cat curled up in my uh, in the chair I was going to use for yoga today. So I, you know how you it's like you can't disturb a cat. So instead, I had to go downstairs and get another kitchen chair. <laughs> Hi, Norman Marie. All right, well, we'll start slowly today and see if anyone else comes on to join us. I'll mute everyone. And I'll pin my video, so hopefully mine will be the video that stays front and center for everyone. There. Good. And feel free to nestle yourselves into the chair. Oh. <sighs> 
joining me. I'm, um, I'm really grateful to be able to have a practice that I can share with people. And I like this Zoom um, ability to see everyone before we start. I, I'm teaching at Alchemy as well. And when I go there, I show up at the studio all by myself and the owner, Kyle, comes and he films me and he's got lights and a, a camera and it's very official but uh, I can't see who's there. And you know me, I like to know all the bodies in the room so that we know where to go with the class. <sighs> so this week, I want you to just settle into your physical body. There's something, some universal lesson that's coming out of all of this. And that is that we can't do we can't do our way out of this. And so there's this, this action of doing needs to give way to the ability to just be. And yoga uses the word svasta, which is seated comfortably in oneself. And it's, a, it's tough because we're finding that as all of our daily activities sort of get removed from our ability, that being in ourselves is more difficult than we thought. And we notice all the different ways that we used to divert our attention or escape having to hang out with ourselves by doing other things, by um, going somewhere or delivering something or whatever. So we are, we're being asked right now to do. And so our practice of yoga has always been a, a place where we've come to practice being to practice um, our connection to ourselves and our knowledge and our um, communication skills with ourselves. Because the greater that aptitude is, the more we can develop that skill set, the more we're comfortable being and not having to try and solve or demand or do our way out of issues that happen. We can be. I don't know if that makes any sense today, but uh, that's what I've been thinking of this morning. So with your sit bones grounded and the crown of your head reaching tall to the sky, just take a deep breath. Let your shoulders stretch up to the ceiling and roll down your back. Allow that to happen two more times. Feel the weight of your body rest down into the bowl of your pelvis. Let the soles of your feet just soften into the floor, the weight of your legs pressing them down. And then feel the lengthening ability of the breath. To fill the body, letting the crown of the head float towards the sky. Hands resting gently in your lap, feeling the breath move from tailbone to crown. Drawing it up and down the spinal column. Allow your head and neck to just start to turn gently on the top of your spine, rolling it in big circles. Noticing tight, sticky areas, maybe hanging out in those areas for a moment, just letting your breath reach in and soften and loosen.
and letting the head float right back up to the top of your spine. Turn the nose all the way to the left. Turn the nose all the way to the right. This time when you take your nose over to the left, just bring your hand up, put your fingers on the right temple and then push your head back into the right hand, but don't move. Yeah, palm prevents it from moving. And then when you let go of the hand, just let your head float to center. Good. Chin goes all the way over to the right. Left fingers come up to the temple. Push the head into the hand. The hand resists. Breathe. And then drop your hand and float your head back to center. Yeah. Let's drop the right ear to the right shoulder. Heel of the left hand comes up. Push your head your, up into your hand. And then let it float. Left ear to left shoulder. Heel of right palm. Push it up. And release. Just shake and nod your head there and feel the relaxation that that movement created. Nice. Shoulders lift right up to ears and then they slide down the back body. Raise your arms to the ceiling and then exhale, pull the shoulders away from the ears. Take a deep breath in, shrug the shoulders up to the ears. Drop them down. Slide them up. Drop them down. Slide them up, drop them down, slide them up. Good work. Arms open, same thing. Shrug and down and shrug and down and shrug and down. Palms face open, squeeze back and come forward. Squeeze back and big hug forward. I'm doing a little bit of a forward bend as I hug forward. Letting chin tuck in. Coming back to center. Nice. Chin tucks into chest. And then roll the upper back downwards. Shoulders coming down towards legs. Round, round, round. Think of the top of your head dropping towards your knees. Good. And then from this, roll back up again, one vertebrae at a time. Just feel like you're stacking your back from biggest vertebrae to smallest, bringing the crown of your head up to the sky. Good. Chin tucks to chest again. Open and wide in the back of your neck. Soften through the space of the shoulder blades. Allow the upper back to roll down. Continue into the mid and low back. Dropping the head towards the knees. Deep breath, and then uncurl, sit bones ground, sacrum tall, each vertebrae stacking on the one below it, uncurl yourself up. Sweet work, last time, chin comes to chest, open the back of the neck, let the shoulders fall forward, open through the upper back, roll the head down towards the knees, Perhaps letting yourself come just slightly further forward than you did last time. And then roll back up again. Sit bones plant. Hips become um, square. Each vertebrae just tucks up on the one. Yes, good job. Tall spine. Roll shoulders three times back. Two. Three. Nice work. Elbows open wide. And then slide your shoulder blades open and closed. Nice. They slide away from the spine and they squeeze towards the spine. Nice. And then just big kind of um, breast strokes as if you were reaching and pulling the water back and reaching forward and pulling the water back. One more roll backwards. Good. Shoulders shrug. Let the palms reach down beside you. Turn thumbs to point up. Fingers spread wide, thumbs point down. Stretch the fingers 
uh, as open as you can. I just have kind of a gentle rocking happen in my upper body where I'm leaning forward, leaning back, just allowing the breath to create just a little rhythm of movement. Feel how the wrists turn now. Turn them now in the elbow pits, turn the elbow pits down and the elbow pits open. And then think of the top of the arm bone rolling forward and rolling back. Yeah. And then the shoulders roll forward, shoulders roll back. Feel how the shoulder blades pull down the spine as you open. Reach up to the ears as you round forward. Breathe with this. Good. And then release your hands right to your heart. Sit bones grounded, crown of your head tall. We keep the palms here and the twists are small. Chin floats above fingertips. Twisting to the right, twisting to the left. Good. Let yourself come back to center and float those fingers to the shoulders and lean all the way over to the right. Let yourself come back up again. Lean all the way over to the left. So just imagine creating the longest distance you can between the armpit and the hip. Breathing into that side body. Yeah, come right back up, nice. And then slide your fingers to the ends of your knees and do your cat and cow. The chin tucks into the chest as the spine rolls back behind you. Chest lifts and opens, lengthening to the sky. Coming back to center, to start to do some big barrel of circles. Rolling that spine in, nice, long, smooth movement. Now allow yourself to go the other direction. Good, and then back to center. Sit bones square, spine tall, nice. You're gonna lift that right leg, open it to the side, touch the toes down, lift it, drop back to center, touch the toes down. Same on the left. Lift, open, toe touch, toe touch, right. Just notice what it feels like to bring that knee up towards your chest and sweep it open. There's a lot of muscles required for that. Last time with this right leg. Last time with this left leg. Nice, good. So then both feet can walk wide. And lengthen to the sky. One shoulder reaches down and comes up. The opposite shoulder reaches down and comes up. Nice. As those shoulders reach down, just notice all the muscles of your back. They're getting a good long stretch. 
And then back to center. Good. As feet come to center, slide your bum to the edge of your chair. Let me move my back a little bit. Slide your bum to the edge of your chair. Good. Tall spine, leaning forward. Yeah. Letting the spine lean forward. Feel how the legs get strong as you lean forward. Good. I'm going to bring my elbows down onto my thighs. Hands can clasp together and just make gentle fists. Maybe you've got to pull your feet in a little bit when you lean forward. Good. So just start to feel how the feet are pressing into the floor. Start to notice if you're pushing your elbows into your thighs. Try and resist that. You're lifting your chest up. You're lifting your heart forward. Get the feet firm into the floor and then just lift your bum an inch off the chair. Yeah. There you go, now start, keep the elbows connected to the knees and start to straighten your legs. Tipping the bum up into the sky. You can release hands to the legs and then stretch the spine into your long straight line. Yeah, you can feel the stretch on the backs of your legs now. You can feel this stretch to the spine as the collarbones pull away from the hips and they open from collarbone, from breastbone to shoulders broadening, just all the back, back muscles squeezing and contracting. Good. And then gentle bend your knees. Inhale those fingers all the way up to the sky. Good. And then coming to stand back behind your chair. Yeah. Let's inhale those hands up to sky. Exhale them to center. Inhale them to sky. Exhale them to center. And to sky, and to center. Good. Allowing those arms to open wide, you can take right over top of left. Bring those palms back to land on your um, shoulders. And you can test. See if these hands can come together. And if they do touch, you can stay here as well, just in that spot where the hands are touching. Now, regardless of what position you're in, I want you to lift your shoulder, lift your elbows and set them back down again. Lift the elbows and set them back down. If hands are lifted, they go up to the sky and come back down. Yeah. Two more. Yeah, open the arms up nice and wide. Take the fingers and pull them back behind you. Nice. Now this time closing left over top of right, same deal. Hands to shoulders or bring palms up to touch each other. Okay, this is your thought process. Can I bring my elbows up and away from my chest and then slide them back in again? Bring elbows up and away from my chest, slide them back in. There you go. Nice. Good work. And last one. Sweet. Roll those shoulders three times down your back. Yeah. And then hands come to the waist. You're imagining the feet hip width apart and you're just sliding the hips in an imaginary track. For me, it's the sliding door in my balcony, how my hips just have to slide right and left. There is no twist and turn in them. Good. Now you might be using that chair for a little bit of balance in the next one. I'm going to take one hand out, put it on the chairs, take those same toes and point them towards the chair. Feet a little bit wider than hip width, hips kick all the way out and away from the chair. Reach. You can let the hand or the forearm relax on the chair. You could even drop the palm down to the base and extend your top hand up. Good. Here your whole thought process is, could you open your chest a little bit? Can you stretch from finger to finger? Can you feel distance happening between the tailbone and the crown of your head? Breathe here. Breathe. 
Nice work. Soles of your feet press into the floor and then inhale, let yourself come all the way up. Shoulders release down your back. Good. And then change which leg is pointed to your chair and let the opposite toes point to the chair, the opposite fingers touch. Reach that hips back to the back edge of your mat and sink into your triangle. Remember, your hands can be wherever they're the most comfortable. Open the chest to the sky. Reach through the hips. Beautiful. Firm press into the feet and let the feet slide back up. Hands reach down, knees bend, feet press to forward. Yeah, good work. So now when you go to check on those hips, do um, hula hoop circles. Nice hula hoop circles. Yeah, right and left. Yeah. I'm going to use the chair now, both hands on the back of that chair, and then just allowing your feet to stretch out, mm -hmm. bringing your body in that nice, long, straight line. Head falls between the elbows, feet drop right underneath the hips. So bend your knees deeply and let the sit bones poke out behind you. Deep breath out, deep breath in, deep breath out. Keep your back as long as you can as you start to straighten your legs again. Good. Crown of your head stretches forward, sit bones reach behind you, nice work. Knees bend and walk the feet forward. Ha! Ah, good work feels so nice to start to stretch out here. We're going to step back with the right foot, pushing it into the floor behind you. Let the left knee come forward. Good. Fingers can stay on the chair, they can lift to the ceiling, or they can drop down behind you. Yes. Push that back heel down into the ground and reach the front knee forward. And just feel that gentle pull through the legs. Imagine the crown of the head, the puppet string, pulling it up to the ceiling, the fingertips heavy to the floor or relaxed on the back of your chair. Breathe. Good. Knee bend. Nice. Fingers release to the chair. I want you to pick up the back heel, lean into the front left foot. Yeah. And then the back heel just starts to lift. Straighten your front leg. Yeah, tip forward over that chair. Lift the back heel. Let the head just release nose and eyes to the seat of the chair. Breathe. Push through that back heel, extend through the crown of your head, and then gently bend the front leg. Set the back foot on the floor again. Land and warrior one. Maybe your fingers float up to the sky. Maybe one hand. Breathe. Good work. Bend into the knees and step the right foot forward. Let's go to the left. Left foot reaches back. Right knee bends. You're just feeling this. You're feeling the beautiful sensation of the lengthening that's happening in the leg muscles. Front knee reaching that back heel, pushing into the floor, noticing where your hands um, can be in your body choosing the position that suits you best. Imaginary string pulling through the crown of your head, lengthening your spine to the sky. Yeah, feet press, front knee reaches. Breathe. Good. Good, hands come to heart, to the back of the chair. Peel the back heel off. Just bring all your weight down into that front foot. Push into that front foot and begin to lift the back heel. Stretch through the crown of your head, reach through the heel. Fold yourself forward. Yeah. As you extend the crown of the head forward, heel backward. Nice work. Yeah. Good pressing, nice strength building in that standing leg. Build, bend the knee, put that back foot on the floor, and then find warrior one again. Choose if you lift both hands to the sky or just one. 
Breathe. Beautiful. Hands can drop down, uh, buoyant in those legs, and let yourself step forward. Good, we're going to the right leg again. So it steps back, right leg steps back. Keep both your legs straight this time. But your hands, we'll move them to the chair in a second, but just let them find it. It's almost like they slide up the thigh and they find the spot where the thigh goes into the hips. And then bring your fingers there. When you fold forward, imagine hiding your fingers in the fold of your hips. Yes. Come down with a nice flat back. Now, as soon as this leg, as these legs say, ah, I can't stretch anymore, then just stay there. Your hands can come back and rest on the back of the chair. Remember, you're only folding forward as far as that front leg lets you. Perhaps the right hip shifts just a tiny bit backwards. Yeah. Lift and wiggle your toes, set them down on the floor, push into the feet and bring yourself all, all the way back. Knees bend, step forward. Back with the left. That heel presses down into the floor. Same thing, fingers slide up the thighs, finding that hip crease, right? Index finger placed right along the hip crease. Let yourself fold, fold forward. Stop as soon as the legs tell you to. Keep the spine long, bring the hands back to the chair. Fold forward, breathe. Allowing your breath just to warm and soften. Soften the muscles that feel tense and tight. Loosen them, let them get more supple and elastic. Good. Let's pick up your toes and wiggle them. Nice. Set them back down. Firm press into the feet and use the strength of the legs to almost leverage the body back up again. Knees bend and step forward. Good job. Standing behind the chair, just start to lift and lower your heels. Imagine the crown of your head going right to the ceiling as you do this. So you're not kind of shifting forward, leaning forward every time you lift your heels, but it feels like you're going right up to the sky. Breathe. Yeah, feel that in the back of those legs for sure. Nice, put those heels down. Lift, I don't care which heel, one of the heels, and just bring the foot up um, about knee height. And then I just want you to press that foot back behind you. Ooh, feel how much work is being done? One, to just lift the heel. Two, to press that foot backwards. Yeah, one more. And then set that foot down. Even your weight out, distribute it between right and left, and then lift your opposite heel. Same height as your knee. Good. Press back, press back, press back. My front body is not leaning, okay? It's not that movement, it is extension at the hip socket. We're asking the leg bone to reach backwards even though the hips are staying neutral. Yeah, two more. Nice, and then set that down. Good, I feel like your toes are gonna wanna go outward now and then just bend your knees and come back up again. Bend your knees and come back up again. Let the tailbone go down to the floor. It's not poking back behind you. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, nice work. Okay, so I'm gonna turn so that I'm not like kicking in towards the chair. So I'm turning so that my right foot can lift out in front of me. I'll make it so you can see better in the camera. Good, and now I'm just gonna lift, lift, lift. Now again, upper body's not moving. Just trying to lift that leg one more. Good, put it down on the floor. And then take the opposite leg, stretch it out in front of you. Lift, rest of your body still. Nice, last one. And put it down, good. Well, widen your stance a little bit more. Toes can point out and then just, 
loosen that out a little bit. Good. So one of the poses we did in the chair, we'll do standing now. You get to bring your hands down to the tops of your knees and then just sway your hips from side to side. Good, now uh, just firm yourself up in the middle and move your shoulders down. Good work. Yeah, press into those legs and lift yourself all the way up. Heel step those feet back together. Good work. Okay, heels and toes back together, perhaps one finger on the chair. Slide your back body down an imaginary wall so that you're basically coming into a chair pose, we call it, like you're sitting in a chair. Can't quite go all the way. Well, we're not even gonna try and go all the way. And then just start to play. What could you get, let these hands be lighter? Maybe they reach out in front of you. Squeeze the thighs together. Let the sit bones be heavy. Imagine that shelf across the low back. We've come across with a big sledgehammer. We're gonna knock that shelf off and feel the quads work harder. Breathe. Breathe, push up into the soles of the feet and hands to the back of your chair, stretch it out. Breathe. Beautiful. Two more breaths. Now bend your knees and walk your feet forward. Good, turn your body to face the um, camera again. You're sideways so that just your right hand can touch the chair. Just your right toes can point towards that chair. Widen your stance a little bit. We're gonna bend into that front knee and straighten it. Bend into that front knee and straighten it. Good. Bend and straighten. Yeah. So reach that front knee out. Stack it right on top of the ankles. Yeah. And then we're going to just open up the side body. Come back to touch the chair. Open up the side body. Come back to touch the chair. Good. Stretch. The back hand can just slide down the back leg. Last one. Nice. Okay, straightening that front leg, bending into both knees, stepping the feet together. Let's do the other side. Uh, it's easier for me to move my chair, so I'll do that. Left foot points to chair, right foot reaches back, knee bends. Good. Just sink there and straighten and bend. One more, one more sneeze, <laughs> excuse me, sweet. Okay, so let that front knee bend. Okay, back hand slides down the back leg. Open up and touch the chair. Open up the side body and reach back for the chair. Sweet. Long extension through the side body. Yes. Nice work. Yeah, hands landed down on the chair, straighten that front leg, buoyant and step forward. One more of those countertop stretches. Oh, you should be doing these as many times of your day, in your day as you can. Just finding length through the back body. Deep bend into the knees, push the sit bones back behind you. Beauty. And walk forward. Good, okay. A uh, little balance pose, we'll do tree before we move down to the floor, okay? So chairs there if you need it. Soles of your feet are together, shoulders rolled back. Let's lift the right heel really slowly. Remember, our goal is to let neck and shoulders be relaxed as you open up this knee in front of you. Yes, 
the low belly turns on, toes can open to the side, big toe can land on the floor, it can go to the ankle or the calf, or you can lift it higher. Breathe. Choose what you might do with those hands. You can leave one on the chair. You can do whatever you'd like to do with those other hands. Breathe. Breathe. Good work. Hands release down. That foot relaxes down. You can wobble out your hips, paddle your heels, get ready for the other side. Ground. Loosen shoulders and neck right off the bat, just reminding them not to take all the um, pressure of this pose. We want it to go, if anything's going to turn on, we want it to feel the low belly. We want, that's what we want to turn on. Okay, for me, it's my right foot grounding, my left heel lifting. Lifting up off that floor, opening the knee to the side, bringing the foot to rest wherever it needs to, toe to floor, to ankle, to calf, or higher. Choosing what your body needs for arm movement. Steady your breath here. Good work. Hands flow down. Nice. Knees come down. So separate your feet just a little bit and I want you to do the hula hoops again. Yeah, we've got lots of movement that we've done in those hips today. I feel like hips and shoulders are always the two places I focus. They're our largest joints. They're the place where our body's ergonomically designed to have the best range of motion. And when we can keep the range of motion open in our hips and open and available in our shoulders, then we don't have as many elbow and knee issues. We don't have as many wrist and ankle issues. So we're just gonna focus on the trickle down effect of keeping healthy hips and healthy shoulders for that trickle down. Nice work. All right, feet come together. Sweep your hands into your low back. Good. Lift the chest up, roll the shoulders down and squeeze those elbows together. This might be where you stay. This might be where you stay. If you like, you can lift the chest up to the ceiling and allow your head to fall back. And if that feels good, you can begin to back bend. Sliding back up, letting chin come to chest when you're done. Roll those shoulders. Good. Forward fold. So you might choose to forward fold over the back of your chair. You might choose to let hands come to legs and let that forward fold go a bit deeper. Your choice. Remember, you can stay there. Hands to chair. Or you can bring hands down to your legs. Knee bend, all of us sweep hands to sky. Breathe, dropping those palms back down to the heart. Good. All right, you're arranging yourself to get to the floor or to sit back down in your chair. You're either seated or when you get down to the floor, you're gonna lie on your back. Remember to put whatever you need underneath you. So if you want extra padding under your hips or sit bones, shoulders, go ahead. Everyone for sure needs some sort of pillow. Most of us don't have uh, the kind of back that just lies easily on the floor with our head not protruding up to the ceiling. Good. Okay. So from, I really do need to get a floor model, hey, so I can have someone sitting in the chair at the same time I'm here. I wonder if I can convince one of my family members to be my chair model. All right, your knee comes into the chest, fingers grasp the knee, and then just point and flex the toe. So if you're seated in a chair, same thing, you're gonna lift one knee into your chest, point and flex your toe. Roll the ankle, yeah and stretch that foot up to the sky. 
Good, so if you're seated in the chair, the foot stretch straight out in front of you. Start to twist that foot in the sky. Nice. Twist it and then go to tick-tocking it. Good. And then slide the knee back down into chest, give it a squeeze and release. And squeeze and release. One more time, squeeze and release. The foot lands back down on the floor. Sweet. Other foot comes in. Fingers wrap the top of the shin and we squeeze and release. Just rolling the toes, pointing them, pulling them, letting the ankle can't go counterclockwise and go clockwise and taking the sole of the foot all the way up to the sky. Once the heel reaches the sky, beginning to just twist that leg bone externally and internally, moving it around in the hip socket. Good. And then tick tock the foot in the sky, letting it fall right and fall left. And when that feels good, the knee comes down into chest, fingers squeeze, and we do that nice deep squeeze and release. Follow your breath with that. Good. Set both feet down on the ground and then your knees can open and close. So you let your knees fall towards the sides and then close them. Fingertips stay right on the hips. So the hips stay in stillness as you just open and close those thighs. Let the inner thigh pull everything closed and lengthen to release things open. Yeah, feel that inner thigh uh, engage to close, lengthen to open. The exact opposite is happening on the outside of your legs, right? It uh, engages to open, it pulls, contracts to open, and it lengthens for your knees to close again. You paying attention to the outside of your legs? Good work. Nice, and then back to center. Sweet, both knees can pull into the chest and then just roll on your back body. This one's harder to do if you're seated in the chair. I'd like you to just sit and do rolls with the spine instead of knees to chest. Feet on the floor, rolls of the spine. Here. If there's any other movements that your body needs right now, feel free to let those other movements come into your body. And if there's nothing extra that your body needs, then you're settling into stillness. If flat on your back feels good, then let yourself stay there flat on your back. It is so rare for us to lie in that long, flat position right now. So many pillows in our bed. We usually lay really rounded forward because of all those pillows. So just letting that back body open, so sweet. If you're in a chair, you're gonna nestle into the back chair. Just allow your back body to open into that chair. Some of you are finding your favorite Shavasana position with calves on a chair or legs up a wall always available. Long, slow breath. Allow yourself to just settle in. Settling into the stillness. Notice how the breath is moving in the body. In yoga, we call that breath um, prana. If we're talking about the energy of the universe, we could call it shakti. Shakti, uh, that universal energy, is called chi in Chinese medicine. 
is called ki, K-I in Japanese culture. It's called Holy Spirit in Christianity. It's called Mother Earth in um, indigenous cultures. So feel that energy. It shows up as a pulsation, as a current, as an expansion and contraction. Feel it roll all the way to your fingertips and toes. Feel it come back to your heart and lungs. Now just the whole body just pulsate. The life force vitality, your innate wisdom, the piece of you that knows how to heal, even though our conscious brain can't figure it out. So we come to the mat to just get out of our own way, to invite that wisdom, however unconscious it may be, to do the work that needs to be done, to heal us as it sees fit, to start where it needs to start. Our only job right now to give it permission to invite it in. Allowing allowing at this time in this stillness to move through our body uninhibited. The glorious flow of this Shakti Prana universal energy healing, repairing, restoring, rejuvenating with every millisecond. And taking a beautiful deep breath, <sighs> exhaling out of your mouth. <sighs> Letting a little smile crawl onto your face and wiggling your fingers and toes. <laughs> Taking big stretches. And allowing yourself to rise up. Oh, nice. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jill. Oh, namaste. Thank you, Jill. You're so welcome. Enjoy your day, everyone. Have a great week. Yes, you too.
We'll, we'll see you all next week, I hope. For sure. <laughs> Bye. See you, Noreen. Bye, Donna. Bye, Mary. Bye, Pat. <laughs> Ten more minutes of Shavasana, Pat. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> uh, bye, Fern. Bye. Bye.